Myself Included by Sam Revere. Once, I thought experience was everything. I went around saying it. A good experience, that's the main aim. It sounded wise, and you could say it in any situation. In fact, a bad one was often best. After having an experience, I held my breath, searching my reflection for signs of depth and strengthened character. It was reasonable proof that I existed. And I once noticed a new line, open at the side of my right eye. My eyes were very beautiful. Sometimes I'd get distracted and gaze into them all afternoon. This was before I stopped trusting my opinions and went around saying it. I no longer trust my opinions. They're unsafe. Sometimes I also said, I am surrounded by the dead. But I'd quickly smile and add, not really. I began to doubt my reflection's authenticity. It didn't blink and raised a right hand to my face. Film was an improvement, at least in terms of accuracy. I filmed my face for hours, then played it back, filming my face while watching it. It was hard to read me as I didn't much react. Also, the silence of the flat was thickening to fizzy soup, and I thought I might start hearing voices. Things were finally getting interesting, but it was time for my trip to America. It was there I stopped believing in the value of self-image and experience. I went round saying it. I have no self-image, and I've destroyed all my experience. Also, I am surrounded by the dead who speak to me through silences on tapes. I know Americans believe such things, so I'd add, not really, very quickly. On the plane, I thought about Tom Cruise how easily I could visualize his face. I wondered if his face was a fair gauge of where and who he'd been, and to what extent it was the sack his soul was pushed into. In America, I became preoccupied with style and came up with a great idea for a website for people who do not trust their opinions. In New York, the style was that the sidewalk was too hot to stand on, and postures of the people attested this. The style of coffee in Chicago was stale lake. All this came naturally while I was in America, which proves how important it is in terms of style. I went round saying it. America is an important place, as far as style goes, that is. Now, would you like me to channel your ancestors? I stopped adding the not really bit as my sense of humor was becoming more acerbic. I wondered if this had to do with my loss of opinions, but didn't worry much about it because I had gone west and now had seen the Pacific Ocean, which looked like an enormous gray car bonnet bearing down on you. The style of firemen in San Francisco on Saturdays was to play ping pong, and the style of burning houses on Saturdays was to burn with tall red flames like sheets flying out of windows. By now my forearms were a beautiful brown color, and I was getting many admiring looks on the street. I finally convinced myself of the ocean, closing my eyes and reciting a list of superlatives. I called Ed about my website. I'd hit on a name, I'm okay, are you okay dot com, and he'd know if I was on to a winner. I kept quiet about the dead, however who I was seeing more or less constantly, lurching on stairwells or waiting out of subways like someone doing the escalator party trick, accompanied always by a buzz of flies. Still, I'd bought ten pair of shades and was accessorizing well with white sneakers and dark jeans, and the sun glanced down often from the tops of blocks. I watched a girl walk down Polk with headphones in, like something out of a dance routine. She cupped her hip as if palming a peach, and I thought, what upmarket dream of herself keeps pace with that saunter? Her mind was tight as a fist. I resisted the urge to ask or to tell her how many corpses were dragging themselves by the lips behind her. Also, I started to wonder about Halloween. It was time to leave. I slow-waved to citizens from the yellow taxi, but my sentiments were short-lived. 
I was frisked at customs by a fat Hawaiian when, asked, when I asked to keep a copy of his fingerprints. I felt sure I'd unlock the mysteries of my experience from those soft-looking whorls and grains. As it was, they told me very little. As it was, the guard scowled, as with prejudice he applied his pocket maglite to the scar on my brow. I quailed in his ray-bands. The scar is a story in itself, I reasoned, failing to placate him. Not that it mattered. As it was, I was leaving the country, and my thick-necked friend patted my ass with his torch butt, but means of farewell. Back in England, I decided to avoid all mirrors. I had been to America, so I went around pretending I'd been to America, with my photos, my new clothes, and everything. The States, I sneered. But I needed more than that to convince me. Ed called. It was no surprise to hear the website was going well. I lost my tan fast. I rotated my shades and held my grin. I'd seen the dead. I didn't miss my opinions much. One Wednesday night, I met Astrid in a restaurant. She'd been my girlfriend, but we'd separated due to her view of relationships as arbitrary constructs and my inability to counter this. I like that new style, she said. Thanks, I responded. I'm going for the Clark Kent at college look, and I'm glad you like it. The stupid bitch didn't realize I could have said the exchange student 89 look, thanks for noticing, and it wouldn't be less right. She knew nothing of the dead. This was obvious from her flushed complexion and air of well-fedness. At the next table, a fireman and a man in a business suit covered in blood were sharing a can of 7-Up. I thought of Tom Cruise and slipped away when she'd gone to the ladies. It was getting hard to call. And besides, I felt I'd proved my point. As it was, I wanted to get back to my flat and my film. As it was, I hadn't tasted my food. Outside, I looked at all the parked-up cars. I had made a decision, but based on what? This is indicative of a general trend, I told myself. I would go around saying it. I wouldn't mention the dead.